This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio on this wet Saturday. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So to get a hold of the show, you can get a hold of us at 602-277-5827, 602-277-5827. And today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, a little bit of slick weather driving, email of the week, open phones, a text, of course, and... This is when, how long has it been since that stupid motorist law came into effect? Oh, I don't know. Several years, I would imagine, but I think uh, they still do it. Well, not so much, Dave. We were talking before the show a little bit. I haven't seen too many of those. Well, we've seen more mountain rescues. You got the stupid hiker law, but yeah, you know, I haven't seen too many cars in in the in the washes and in the elective uh, flooding of the cars. You know, trying to. You know, the guy, you know, with the Hummer that can do anything and go across and, and, and get stuck. I haven't seen many of those, so I think it's working. So people are wising up to these uh, Mother Nature. You don't want to cross her path when, you know, that water's fierce. I mean, it, it literally never fails after a rainstorm like this. We get what we call, you know, just these water cars that come in. They come in with weird problems, misfires, intermittent stuff. When water gets into stuff, it just does weird things because it doesn't really go away right away, you know. Oh yeah, and they'll they'll show up later too. I mean, you can have all kinds of problems. I, I, I mean, I've got a list of examples here of, of weird things that we fix due to rain, and they're not always right after the rain. And then some people, you start telling them, you know, they come in, they've got this weird problem with their lights. That's one example I can think of recently. Lights are acting funny and all this weird stuff, and they can't for the life of them figure out what's going on. And then after we finally find all these corroded wiring, and they go, oh, I did have my windshield replaced. Mm-hmm. And, That's where the, this is where the bad windshield job shows up. <laughs> yeah. So be careful for all those free stakes. You know, when people start, pay, <laughs> when people start paying you to replace their windshield, there might be uh, a little bit too much uh, left on the table there. But, but yeah, if, if they don't get the seal just right, or oftentimes they have to drill out some things if they drill too far, and maybe that's when you get your lack of experience, you know, the... The, the, the new guy maybe did the windshield, and, and uh, you know, the overwhelming majority of the time, they all do a good job. Just got to say that. But weird mm-hmm. problems. Sunroof drains, for example. You know, you park your car under the little Palo Verde tree or whatever you have at home, and, and uh, not everybody uses their sunroof a lot, but little pieces of debris get in there, and those drains run through your headline or down the A pillar, which is the post at the windshield and the door. Mm-hmm. They even run down the back sometimes. Those plug up. Yeah, or they crack. I've seen some of them that crack, and then that water is just just like having a rain gutter right down into the interior trim of the car. The thing about driving in this town when it comes to rain is that I just don't think we think about drainage very well here. You know, because oh, yeah. it just doesn't rain here. They're like, what do we need to put a crown on the road for? It doesn't rain, right? So some places where it rains all the time, maybe take Chicago or something. I mean, those streets will drain when it actually rains. Here, there's no drainage, so your right lane is completely immersed in water. So. You know, when I was a kid, I used to love to drive in the right lane, especially past bus stops where the people sitting next to the road. <laughs> you just throw go, a wave over them. You're going to hell, I think. <laughs> I, was, I was young. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so the, the, but it causes issues. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got that thing that's hanging down from your car because you parked on the curb too many times. And you finally, you just tear it off so you don't have to listen to it drag. Well, that, that little shield underneath the car is kind of important when you hit big puddles. So this is the time when you, you're wishing you had all the shields. Or maybe at the auto shop last week, they're like, hey, you need some wiper blades. And like, eh, don't worry about it. And now today you can't see when you're driving down the road. <laughs> yeah, you're – hey, you know, at 10, 930 this morning driving down the 51 coming in here, it was – it was the visibility was, was pretty low. And I can think of several things. I mean, I love my windshield wipers on my car. I put some Bosch blades on it. Back in, during the monsoons, those things are the best blades. You know, and when you're picking wiper blades, there's the full gamut. I mean, you want to talk about the cost of a steak or a cheeseburger. I mean, you know, what it, you can buy the $2.99, the biggest piece of junk wiper blades out there. And for the same exact car, you can go find a $35 wiper blade. And, and there is a huge difference in those blades. So when you're making those choices, think about the car, what kind of car you have, what it goes on, what are you doing with the car. Uh, and believe it or not, we had a windshield wiper guy come over when we did a changeover wiper blades. I ruined my first pair of wiper blades just putting them on wrong. 
I mean, and you think, how the heck can you put on a pair of wiper blades wrong? It's a beam blade. There's a nice piece of metal in there that helps keep its form. Mm. I was not holding it right. I was pushing pressure on it, trying to get the clip in, bent the blade. What do I have on my windshield wiper? On my window when it wiped the first time? A nice little line. So you can't, I mean, you got to be careful. Even with the dumbest thing like a windshield wiper blade. I thought I'm you like, were smarter than that. I know, me too. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, uh, but another thing, you know, a little, I want to give some people some tips, I guess. There's all kinds of problems we talk about. Well, on your wiper blades, you know, if you're looking at, if your car's parked in the garage, it's pouring down rain right now, looking out the window, go in the kitchen. You know, if you think your windshield wipe, maybe squirt your windshield washers. And if they don't wipe the window real well, you can, if you've got some really fine grit, like 400 grit sandpaper, or even maybe in the kitchen, you've got your Brillo pad, go lift the windshield wipers off the window and just clean them off. All those, you know, they, we don't use them a lot here. And the bugs and everything get splattered up against them, and those dry up, and that's what causes the the lines on the windshield. So before you go run over to the auto parts store and get soaking wet, you might just save yourself a little bit of hassle and clean those things off before you leave the house today. You know, I feel like wiper blades in this town go bad for lack of use. You just don't use them. Oh, yeah. I mean, you put them on, and then 365 days later, it rains again, you know? And then all you've had is sunshine and heat since then, so the, the rubber's all dried and cracked. And it sticks to the window. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like half of it rips off. <laughs> and you got to be careful, though, too, because if you put the wiper blade on and that arm comes off, the blade itself, you can ruin your windshield. Oh, that, yeah. That's another, another little thing. But then, Dave, you also talked about the shields. And I, I don't. I know there's at least one brand. I know the Dodge Caravan, in, in some several years back, there was some uh, change where – the, the shielding underneath wasn't real great, and if you drove that car through a, de- a decent puddle and got a good splash under the hood from underneath, the belt would wasn't very well protected. It would, it would hydroplane, and the belt would come off. And now you're in the rain, and you've lost your power steering. You've lost your alternator, your water pump, all this stuff, and it's not very easy to drive that car. So just having those shields and stuff in place, it's the littlest things. And we think these engineers go overboard sometimes. But all this stuff it's for a point. is it's for a on reason. that car for a reason. Believe me, if General Motors could save having to put that $9 piece on $2 million, two million cars. Oh, they would. That would go right to the bottom line. And, and, and they would save that money if they, thought it was, if they thought it was worth it. So what are some of the other things, Dave, you think of that, that we can't really control even? You know, I think about just driving. I mean, driving habits need to be different. Stay out of that right lane because you're just sitting there pounding that water, some of that spraying up underneath the hood. And the thing of it is, <clears throat> because there isn't good drainage on our roads, you're going to get that water in the spots so you don't want to get it. And it can cause problems later. We talked about the windshield obviously being a problem. But, uh, you know, if you can avoid the water, by all means, avoid it. I mean, regular rain water, no big deal. But <clears throat> to just... Go out of your way not to hit those big puddles. Well, and, in, but in some of the things you can't control, like I have a, a customer whose Lexus, they had a Lexus hybrid. It was totaled in the last, you know, rain, not this most recent rain, but about a month, six weeks ago. It was just simply parked in the parking lot. All they <laughs> did was go to work, and they just happened that they parked in the low section of the lot. That car had, you know, when it was a... Lexus or, you know, like a Toyota Camry, for example. So you just go over the door sill, and there's like maybe, what, a four-inch drop where your feet are before the, the door jam. That thing was full. All the electronics were underneath the seat or just swimming oh, in yeah. water. Oh, yeah, they put computers underneath the seat. You don't want that car. No. A good thing at total. That thing, it's like a fire on a car. If it's a classic car, you get that fire out as soon as you can. If it's a new car, you tell everybody, stay away. Let that sucker burn. <laughs> because <laughs> you don't want to own a car that was flooded or had ever caught on fire. It's funny when people try and rehab a flooded car. It just never, never, never goes well. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't at all. So, yeah, and I've seen, I mean, we do. It's the week after, maybe two weeks after, we still get the car show up. And, like, ever, you know, they say, my car's doing this, that, and the other. And then you kind of connect the timeline to the rainstorm, and that's when it happened. Mm-hmm. And the water gets in a lot of places, you know, that, that it's not designed to go. Uh, you know, misfires certainly show up. Of course, uh you know, other well, I had a friend of mine uh, just put a post on Facebook the other day. He says, you know, my wife was out of town for a week, and he lives over in Paradise Valley. He goes, the car won't start. Open the hood. There's a pack rat, pack rat nest. Well, th- those guys that live out in the desert, those little houses underground there, they're flooding out. They wanna, they're want to they beating feet to high ground, so they're coming to your garage looking for, for dog food and everything, and they make a nice little nest in your car, too, so the, you can watch out for some of that. Guess what happened to me the other day? I had a dead battery. The I mean, Nissan battery in my Nissan Xterra decided to give out. But what was kind of cool it was the first time I ever tried that jumper box. I bought it down at the Interstate store. Mm-hmm. It's that little pre-deal. You know, it's in your car, and you can charge your phone on it. It's got little jumper cables in there. And I, 
I've seen them. I didn't really think it would work. I know the first. <laughs> I put it. I put it on the battery. You know, put it on. Fire right up. I know. I thought to myself when I saw that, how the heck is this thing going to start a car? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was going to work. Sure But enough. so it worked. And I had bought that at the Interstate Battery Store. So got into work, got a new battery, put in my car. Interstate, of course, because of the best batteries on the market. Coast to coast, uh, you warranty it anywhere. So Interstate Batteries, that's what we use at our shop. And we check every battery that comes through the store, you know, j- or comes through our shop, just because batteries cause so many weird issues with your car. They do. And, and I test these batteries, and they start the car. It goes vroom as soon as they turn the key. But yet the battery tester will say the battery is bad. Well, it's because it's it's missing something or it's not quite right. It's actually even just predicting that you're going to have a failure of the battery in the future. Yeah, well, I mean, if the car only takes 400 amps to start, but you've got a 600 amp battery in there and it tests at 500 or whatever the number might be, it's enough to start the car, but it doesn't satisfy. It may not have the reserve capacity that it needs to keep all your electronics and your computers running. So for definitely sure. want to get that battery replaced and go to interstatebatteries.com if you're looking for one. And today's a day where we can talk about anything. We're talking about the rain. We're talking about wiper blades. We're talking about puddles. We're talk, we could talk about ABS brakes. Anything you want to talk about in relation to your car, maybe there's something cooking away in the back of your brain that you're ignoring, pretending it's not there, uh, and you want to talk through it, give us a call at 602-277-5827. Again, 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. We'll be right back. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. What's the right call after a car accident? Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Auto Body Salon. I invite you to check us out online and see why so many people have made us their first call following their accident. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved, five-star rated with Yelp and CarWise.com, and A-plus rated by the BBB. Make your first call the right call to Campus Auto Body Salon. Check us out online at CampusBodySalon.com. Serving the Valley since 1973, Campus Auto Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Well, I love the rainy night. I love the rainy night. I love to hear the thunder. Watch uh, yeah. the lightning when it lights up <laughs> the sky. You can always count on Carrie for some good mm-hmm. music. I know. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're helping you with your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Talk about anything you want to talk about in your car, whether you got a noise, you got a vibration, you got a light that you don't know what it means, you've yep. got a sunroof that doesn't work, you got a bumper that's falling off, hitting the ground. Anything in relation to your car, give us a call, 602-277-5827. You can also text us at 411-923. So i got to tell you a funny story. <laughs> I'll tell you if it's funny after you tell <laughs> no, it, but I'm funny. not just giving you that. If you could have seen, if we could have an in-car camera of me, probably I would have say it might have been around this time of year, 1991. I had a 76 280Z. Thought it was pretty cool, you know, <laughs> driving around rainy day. And it was before they really, you know, I used to live up by Tatum and Greenway. And before Tatum was really four lanes all the way to Bell Road, it used to kind of end and just kind of a little dog leg over. And and uh, I'm cruising along, big old puddle on the side of the, the right side there. And I hit that sucker. And sure enough, you would have thought that I just stood in front of a fire hydrant. There was that car I brought with me from Virginia. I didn't really pay much attention to it. I was just driving it. I didn't realize the floorboard was rusted out. And when that water blasted on that right wheel, when it smacked, you know, you can hear it on your regular car (laughs) rushing through. Well, that 280Z, it really doesn't have much more than what amounts to a floor mat on, on, on the ground down there. It's not like the modern carpet where it's all molded in place. I was drenched in. It was, Water. It was horrible. I mean, on my way to work, and I'm just covered. I mean, I don't. I was like, "What in that? Where the hell did this come from? What happened? I couldn't even think of anything." And I got to work, and there's. I mean, you could put like the Flintstones. I could have had Barney in my passenger side to hit the brakes and pedal along. I mean, big old hole. So I got some of that, you know, heavy duty plastic from Home Depot and rolled duct tape, and we fixed that sucker right up. 
<laughs> Duct tape is an amazing uh, tool. That was the last time your hair got wet. Cause you, did you have hair back then? Yeah, I still picture. had some hair back then. You know? All right. A few more years after that, 10 years or so. For sure. Well, the phones are starting to come in at 602-277-5827. We're going to go with Tammy in Mesa. She's got a 2006 Pontiac Grand Prix. How can we help you, Tammy? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, I'm just curious. When I turn on my right blinker, my high beams come on. Hmm. <laughs> we both, that was not planned, that answer there. So, wow. Have you? Did this just suddenly start one day? Yes. Yeah. Does it blink? Yeah, it blinks. In the high and, it's, and it's only my right blinker. I can turn my left blinker on and my high beams don't come on. If, I had, I, if, right? I, if I had to throw a dart, I mean, this would be a wild guess. Um, I would say that multifunction switch is, is going bad, you know, because yeah. your bright light is right in there and your blinker's right in there. Maybe a little cross contamination going on inside that switch. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I would be looking at. Now, is this something Tammy related to rain, or is this something that's been happening for a while? No, it's been happening for a while. Probably about the last, probably almost last year. Uh huh. And then, do both headlights come on, or is it just the same side as the turn signal? The high beams just come on. Right, but both high beams. Yes. Do they? Fl- okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I throw in the dart at the wall. That's some of the, what, what needs to happen, the way that any shop is going to diagnose that and figure it out. And it could be easy. That could be one of those nightmares though. You just, you don't know what this can of worms is going to open up, up into. It may be nothing, but you got to really look at a wiring diagram. That's the roadmap. And you got to look and trace that out and figure how can the action of turning this wiper switch on or this turn signal switch back feed to those headlight bulbs. It could be a multifunction switch. Dave, we've had all kinds of weird problems with light bulbs with the one element drags over. And mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, we had a Hyundai the other day where the brake light bulb, the element in one of them broke and it was back feeding. Every time you step on the brakes, the car would stall. Back feeding into the computer. Just weird, weird things, even from a light bulb. So, Tammy, good luck with that. In Mesa, you can find a couple different bumper-to-bumper shops out there if you don't have a good shop to take your car to. You know, it's funny is that, you know, people talk about their, you know, I hear people talk about their cars all the time. Oh, we had this one car and it just had electrical gremlins in it. You know, how, how many times have you heard that story? Yeah, they chalk it up. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there, there isn't really electrical gremlins. I mean, there can be when it's some weird problem. Like you said, some light bulb can create some weird back feeding of voltage and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, when people tell us these stories, immediately in our brain, we're just connecting things. How could that be connected to that? You know? Yeah, we, it, we click into problem solve mode. <laughs> For sure. Our disease. <laughs> in what we mean by the multifunction switch, that's a switch where, you know, when you hit the blinker, that goes into a switch in the steering column that does all those things that it does. Remember the old days you had the push button on the floorboard for the high beams? Mm-hmm. You don't see that anymore, do you? No, no. That's the secret uh, kill switch nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Thanks for the call, Tammy. 602-277-5827. We are going to go with Martin in Phoenix. He's got a 2010 GMC Sierra. How can we help you with your Sierra? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, um, uh, good talking to you. Um, I've got a, a 2010 uh, GMC, and I have trouble with the uh, with the idle on this thing because I can uh, a lot of times when I slow down, I'll uh, hit the brakes, and when I hit the brakes, the idle wants to go up, and then the idle will do that for a little while and have to hold the brake down and keep it from shooting forward. And then when I hold it down for a second or two, it idles back down to about five or 600 RPM, which is probably about normal. And it does that a lot, uh, you know, especially after I've started it or even after I've been on the road for a while, I'll slow down. And uh, if I throw the thing in neutral, I can see the uh, RPMs go up, you know, as high as 12, 1500 and then drop back down to 600 once I start slowing down. You know, a complete stop. Hmm. But if I, you uh, know, if I throw it in neutral, it goes up and it comes back down, and then I hit the brakes and put it back in drive. Dave, and you know, in, it, in it Martin, all the time. I, I don't, I don't think that we've got a real complicated problem here, Dave. No, I, mean, I, I think I, as soon I, as the brakes affect the idle, I'm thinking of the brake booster. But I'm see, I'm going uh, 180. No? I'm going really? the opposite way, dude. Yeah, yeah, oh. other way. Hmm. I'm, I'm think well. You know, I'm thinking I, we got a vacuum leak there. Yeah, I I would kind of could go there, but I'd be looking at the throttle body too. You know, a lot of times those things just get carboned up. That's a that's a throttle by wire. Mm-hmm. So um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, you, you step on the brake, there is a change in vacuum potentially on the engine. And, and if that throttle blade, that, that's electronic. So that blade is just opening and closing to allow the de, desired amount of air into the engine. And if that's gummed up and, and not properly calibrated, that very well could cause that. It just can't react fast enough, and you get those surging. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, could be a brake booster issue too. Yeah, yeah. Don't see very many boosters go out on the Chevy or GMC trucks, though. Yeah, I know. Well, that's you know, in my in my mind, that's kind of like the old school thinking. You know, back in the, that would have been right. a more common problem. But I do kind of think of that, you know, because I know sometimes you know you could just have you know the throttle body and you know an idle issue there, but also brake booster could be a problem. Yeah, and the cure for that sometimes is. Um, well, really, the test for the cure is Wood might just take a rag with some solvent and open up the throttle blade and, and manually clean that out. There, uh, Oftentimes in some cars, there's an idle relearn procedure. We would do that. And then once we've confirmed if that, in fact, did or did not fix the car, then we might finish the job with doing a full induction system cleaning or something like that. But if we went down the wrong road, then we start plugging off lines, going to a brake booster. There's a methodical way uh, to diagnose that, Dave. For sure. Well, thanks for the call, Martin. We've got Glenn, Bob, Rita, and Chuck, and we'll have room for more at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. There is nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock here for Kurt's Auto Repair. I brought my nephew and general manager, Jeff Rock, to help spread the word. Thanks, pups. Yep, the more things change, the more they stay the same at Kurtz. Family owned and operated, our ASE Master Techs and Family Ethics have earned us a perfect Better Business Bureau record for over 30 years. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell or online at mycarhertz.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Some say one of the worst sounds you can hear is a car crash. Yes, and all the stress that goes with that can be worse. The accident is stressful enough. The repair process doesn't have to be. Hi, this is Kevin, Dave, and Leo, and we're the collision team at Bumper to Bumper Radio. Individually, we own Campus Body Salon, I-17 Collision, and First Class Auto Body. Together, we're an unbeatable team working for you, not the insurance company, to get your job done right. Check us out at BumperToBumperRadio.com. Here's what Carrie from Tempe had to say about her experience with Good Works Auto Repair. As soon as you realize, I need to get some work done on my car, I'm sure the thought occurs to you that you're about to get taken for a ride. I used to share the same sentiment and wondered if the shop was going to make something up and have me spending hundreds of dollars instead of 30 I was planning on for a simple oil change. This is one of the reasons I will only go to Good Works Auto Repair. Because I trust them. Putting trust in an auto shop didn't come easily. It's been built over several visits with them doing exactly what was needed, not coercing me into unnecessary work. Ask them for an oil change and a safety inspection, they do just that. No baloney, list of filters, belts, and whatchamacallits that need replacing on my new car. Thank you, GoodWorks Auto Repair, for being there for me when I need you. Appreciate the kind words. It's always a pleasure. Glenn Hayward here. Come experience what award-winning auto service should be. GoodWorks Auto Repair in Tempe, or visit us at GoodWorksAutoRepair.com. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. KTAR News Time is 11.30. I'm Nailea Leon. KTAR News. Storm Central. The valley has already seen tons of rain throughout the morning. National Weather Service Larry Hopper. Uh, the areas that have gotten the most rain are the Buckeye area and Whitman areas in the West Valley near the white, and the white tanks that have gotten up to potentially two inches. And also over South Mountain where we've seen uh, almost two inches. He says we can expect the showers to stick around all afternoon. Parts of the West Valley are under a flash flood warning until 2 this afternoon. So make sure you are, you are aware and turn around and don't drown. Emergency officials said they hope to complete a more careful inspection of thousands of ruined buildings in Mexico Beach, Florida, following Hurricane Michael. Teams found a body in the Florida Panhandle town near, nearly wiped out by Michael, bringing the storm's death toll to at least 17 across the south. Now let's get a check on traffic. Here's Mike Daniels in the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center. 
Got a crash in Peoria, Loop 101 westbound at 75th Avenue. Crash block in the HOV lane. Police and fire on scene. Expect some uh, delays in that area. Also, a wreck moved off to the side. A loop of State Route 51 northbound at Thomas Road. Again, Mitchell Cruz on scene. Expect some delays there. Drives carefully. This report brought to you by Smokey's Garage Door. Is your garage door squeaking, rattling, or just not working? The pros at Smokey's Garage Door will get you back on track fast. Free estimates and same-day service available. Just click SmokeysGarageDoor.com. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. KTAR weather for the valley. Sky Harbor has gotten four inches of rain right now. Mesa and Chandler are also seeing tons of showers rolling in. There is a flash flood warning again in effect until 2.30 this afternoon. It's 67 degrees in Mesa. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. Weather replace or repair, call Howard Air. I'm Nailea Leon on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. Breaking news, traffic, and weather 24-7 with traffic updates every six minutes weekday mornings on Arizona's only all-news morning show. Arizona gets its news from Arizona's news station. KTAR News on your radio at 92.3 FM and streaming live on the KTAR News app. Life's good news often comes with a little bad news, right? Hi, Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission and co-host of Bumper to Bumper Radio. Car repair seems to follow that same trend. The good news? Transmissions are lasting twice as long as they used to. The bad news? They can cost as much as $1,000 more than you might remember. So if you're going to have to spend some money on a new transmission, you want to be sure you really need it. And if you do, that it's done right at a fair price. For over 45 years, Tri-City Transmission has built a reputation for having the experience and expertise to properly diagnose and repair your transmission without costly overhaul or replacement. If we do have to recommend a major transmission repair, you can be assured you're getting an honest recommendation and a job done right at a fair price. I guarantee it. Check us out online at tricitytransmission.com. That's tricitytransmission.com. TriCityTransmission.com Honesty and integrity, it's the only option. Hi, Spencer Doucet for H&I Automotive. H is for honesty and I is for integrity. We built our business on these two principles. Hi, this is Danny Grant. And I'm Paul Garcia. We're Spencer's business partners. Originally, we were customers that were referred by friends to check out this great shop in Mesa. We saw for ourselves how special the experience was at H&I. Yup, we went from raving fans to good friends to enthusiastic partners when Spencer was looking to expand his business to the East Valley. Thanks, guys. The overwhelming support from our customers, families, and partners has allowed us to celebrate the opening of our second, brand-new, state-of-the-art location in Gilbert. Two locations, same principles. Quality service at a great value that you can count on for all your automotive needs. Backed with an industry-leading 60-month, 60,000-mile parts and labor warranty. We invite you to check us out at hniautomotive.com. Who can you trust here in the valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we are helping you with your car at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And I mentioned that it never fails that the week after a big rainstorm, we get cars in our bays that wouldn't normally be there because of the wet. The other thing that happens during a rainstorm You get cars in body shops that wouldn't normally be there. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Today, some people are going to have a bad day, unfortunately. So if you're not pumping the brakes and going a little slower because it's raining out there and you end up wadding your car up, thank God these cars got all these safety features. But you need to get the car fixed, and you need to get it fixed by a good body shop. And at BumperToBumperRadio.com, we have the Collision Team. We've got three great body shops on there, so you're covered no matter what part of the valley you're in. And for a body major repair like that, you don't want to trust that just to anybody. You know, one of the things I notice at, at, at some of the newer, you know, the less uh, experienced body shops, they don't hardly, you know, these new F-150 trucks are aluminum, right? Can you weld aluminum, Matt? Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Either can most people, okay? Because it's tough, and it takes a special, special machine, too, yeah. right? 
Some of these shops that are repairing cars for body work, they don't even have an aluminum welder in the shop. So how are they actually fixing the car right? But I know the shops at the, uh, the collision team at Bumper to Bumper Radio, they're advanced and they have all that stuff so they can fix the modern car. Because the modern car can be brand new off the lot and you can wad it up. It doesn't have to be five years old to go in for a major repair. And remember, when you're choosing your body shop, it doesn't need to be the local garage around the corner. It mm. doesn't need to be the one right next door. This is a big repair. Mm-hmm. It's going to take some time. So if you've got to drive an extra 20 minutes in an Uber or you got to go a little further, we're talking about a little bit of extra time for something that you've got to live with for a long time in, in your car. So pick one of those body shops. And, and I mean, chances are the car might not even – you might not even have your car. It might be at the tow yard anyway. So who cares? Mm-hmm. Just take it, you know, and then remember, you get to choose where you want to go. Your insurance company is going to have a great list of suggestions for you. And they're going to say, you can go here and you can go here. And uh, what you want to do is say, no, I've gone to bumper to bumper radio and I'm going to go to I-17 collision over at 23rd Avenue in Peoria. Or I'm going to go to uh, first, first class. class auto body down there in South Scottsdale, like Civic Center in Thomas area. Or we're going to go to campus body salon over there off Curry and, and you know, the 202 Scottsdale Road area. Tell your insurance company, I got this handled. And I, I, you, you guys just pay the bill. I'll, I'll take care of where I want my car fixed because that's my choice. I, I, we, one of our listeners, Lauren, she brought a car in her shop, 104,000 miles on it. She's like, I want your, your comprehensive thing that you guys always talk about. She goes, I want to do that because I have kind of you know feel like I've neglected the car a little bit, but I want to get it caught up. And then, by the way, I pulled the front bumper off on a curb. So can you look at that, too, to see if it's reattached? So we fixed all that stuff, and I called over to Campus Body Salon, and I called Leo, and I said, hey, I want to refer this later over to you. But I started the conversation with, can I get a wax? You know, because the name throws you, Campus Body Salon. I right. mean, if you didn't know better, they actually fix cars you over there. You should get a waxing, Dave. I got You can see the hair coming out of the back of your shirt. <laughs> I will never, I will never. You and I have exactly the opposite problem. You got no hair and I got too much. Mm-hmm. So anyway. And I don't want any more either. But hey, let's take a minute. Though. I know we've got Glenn and Bob and Nathan, Rita, Chuck hanging on, have some questions. But a couple tips if you are unfortunate enough to get in a car accident today. If you can get that car off the road and get it into a parking lot, you can maybe avoid of having the police co- uh, towing contractor tow your car. Um, it's a lot better than it used to be when I was famil- more familiar with the towing business. But oftentimes your car goes off and ends up in a storage yard, and then it takes forever. You've got to jump through hoops, and you've got to do all this stuff to get your car back or get it released. Um, you know, and, and they, they steer cars and, you know, and I'm, and I'm just making some broad generalizations, but you shenanigans but, do go on. Yeah, they do. So if you can get that car out of the way, the police aren't going to tow your car. Don't try and drive it. If it's not drivable, call your insurance company. Maybe they'll dispatch their own tow truck. Now, if you're in the stuck in the middle of the road and it's a severe accident or, you know, you've got to go to the hospital or, or something unfortunate like that, <laughs> just let the car go. You need to worry about yourself and your, your passengers and, and, and other people and, on the road and, too. and other people on the road, too. But if you can get off and be safe, it might just save you a little bit of a hassle. So keep that in mind. For sure. Let's go with Rita in May. So she has a 2002 Nissan Altima. How can we help you, Rita? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Um, The handles on my back doors of the car have come off, and I wanted to know who might be able to put those back on. Now, do you say, is it the outside door handles or the interior door handles? It's the outside door handle on both sides. That's one of those repairs, like literally, uh, I, had a, I had a car in my shop here a couple of weeks ago, and the interior door handle was broken. And so this person literally for a year would roll the window down, open the door, and then roll the window back up. All for <laughs> $175. No, I kid you not. The part was $23. Oh, okay. And so uh, we had done a transmission repair. So we went ahead and took care of it just as like a courtesy, like, hey, by the way, you fix that door handle so you don't have to roll your window down to open your door. But door handles break. Usually the, the handles are plastic anymore, and they just get old and brittle, and then they break. And it's not a major repair. Uh, the body shop Certainly can handle that as well, but I know Matt at your shop you would handle something like that. I know. Yeah, shop, the, the bigger challenge comes is when some of these handles come and they're painted door, you know, their mm-hmm. body color. So I mean, we've done some, Dave. You know, where the the mirror comes and it's, you know, maybe you've got a white car and then all of a sudden you've got one white mirror and one black mirror. Well, I've had people just say, just put two new mirrors on. <laughs> then they <laughs> match. Then I have two <laughs> matching, right. uh, you know, matching, symmetrical matching mirrors, but. And sometimes those things come loose; they can be tightened up. I, you know, I doubt that. Quote: Just put mine back on. Chances are, um, you might need a new door handles. 
but not a big deal for any shop to take care of. For sure. You're in May, so go ahead and give the guys at Campus Body Salon if you're looking for somebody to do that for you. Let's go with Chuck in Scottsdale. He's got a 2001 Ford Expedition. How can we help you, Chuck? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, hi, guys. Hi. I'm having a um, battery problem. Uh, it's a it's a second vehicle, and it sits most of the time. But uh, I just put in, a, I think, the fifth battery since 2015. Oh, wow. And uh, this time I had it put in in uh, July at the oil change place because, you know, I, I've been using a uh, uh, a booster pack to just, you know, get it going if, if the battery's dead. And I took it in there and I said, hey, you know, what's going on with my battery? What's what's the problem? And they, they said, well, hey, your battery's no good. We, we, we can give you a new one or we can sell you a new one with a three-year warranty. Well, this was in July. And so I thought, okay, great. So uh, last weekend I took I, uh, I took the expedition up to North Scottsdale to go to breakfast, and coming out of breakfast, it wouldn't start. And uh, so it was a big problem for me. Well, that's so awesome. anyway, I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up back at the, uh, uh, after getting it charged, back at the uh, oil change place, and they, they, they ran a check on the battery, and it was a bad battery. And then he said, you know, you have an alternator problem. You have some kind of an issue because literally the, the car had only gone, the truck had only gone 381 miles since July. Um, do you have, and do you uh, have... he, so he, he took, he unhooked the battery while it was still running after they charged it up and it kept going. He said, well, I don't think it's your, I don't think it's your alternator. I don't know what it is. He replaced the battery. Dave and I are going to fight. Me? Dave and I are fighting over who's going to, who's going to mm, tell you right. you're at yeah. the wrong place. You're at the wrong place if they're doing that for an alternator test. Yeah, that, that, that is okay. not that. Yeah, that is that is not the way to do that. You could do that back in 1985. You know, it is, yeah, is a before church. Let's see if the alternators work and pull the battery cable, uh, cable off in the driveway. But hey, it was the manager. What, what am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> right? No, no, no. I, yeah, I guess get what it. that manager's doing, training the young guys. I, 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 I get it. And, and so uh, that needs to be checked out by somebody who's who's good with good with the electrical system can can really look at what's going on as far as do we have a key off draw because you're going through a lot of batteries maybe something's discharging the battery uh that's a possibility this other one didn't sound like it's a key off draw problem because you drove it up to north scottsdale from south scottsdale yeah. wherever you're at and uh and click click and nothing you know nothing working so there's more going on there that somebody's just missing the source because i get losing a battery after 15 months that's not unusual that happens but you know, I think he said like like eight in like four Five, years or something yeah, since yeah, since 2015. Definitely too many. And and think about: Do you have any aftermarket accessories? Uh, is the glo- you'll go out in the garage at nighttime when totally dark and see if you see any glow coming out of the glove box. I've had have have had cars with the the uh, you know the glove box light on. Dave, I had a car where people would say their alarm would go off in the middle of the night. Uh, you know the the door lock switches, and I know those expeditions have that problem too. The the door lock switch is part of the latch, mm-hmm. so that thing occasionally may just be thrown on the interior light. You could have something like that. I've seen cars with radar detectors. I mean, years ago we had a pilot had a Porsche 944. Every time he'd go out of town, he'd come back to the airport. His car was dead. We had a built-in radar detector. He'd be gone for four days at a time. That radar detector is just going nuts for four days. Every time it killed the battery, he could park it at home. Never had the problem. Only at the airport. It only took three or four weeks to you know thinking through all this crazy stuff. Well, Chuck, the other thing, the other thing too, Chuck, is to always make sure you're living right because that affects batteries in our cars for sure. <laughs> so when we come back, we've got Glenn, Bob, and Nathan. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys on Bumper to Bumper Radio. What's the right call after a car accident? Hi, Leo Petrozello for Campus Auto Body Salon. I invite you to check us out online and see why so many people have made us their first call following their accident. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved, five-star rated with Yelp and CarWise.com, and A-plus rated by the BBB. Make your first call the right call to Campus Auto Body Salon. Check us out online at CampusBodySalon.com. Serving the Valley since 1973, Campus Auto Body Salon, the best care in collision repair trust it's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find if you live or work in downtown phoenix matt allen's virginia auto service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th street and virginia recognized as one of the best service shops in the country their customers have come to trust virginia auto service for its a-plus rating by the bbb two-year 24,000 mile warranties and free transportation to and from your home or office 
20 plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. That's our closing line, Pops. I know, Jeff. Just reinforcing that we're full service auto repair. At Kurtz Auto Repair, we do it all, including diesel. We have the passion, training, equipment, and expertise for diesel. Our techs are ASE certified for diesel and advanced diesel diagnostics. Toy hauling, horse trailering, off-roading, or work trucking, we've got you covered. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. Check us out at mycarhurts.com. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Annie Lexus. It's not Lexus. Wait, this is a car show. <laughs> Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we're helping you with your car. And we've got Nathan. <laughs> and we've got Nathan, Bob, and Glenn, and Matt is staring at me with the weirdest look right now. Well, normally we stand up, but I'm just this. This the longer this day goes, and it's not oh, even a long, lazy day. I am getting lazy. Like I could barely even stand up. I'm sitting in the chair, but now I can't reach the phone, so I'm going to have to <laughs> readjust this mic, get up off my butt. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I am going to take a text here. Uh, this gentleman has a 98 Chevy Silverado, 5.7 liter. Every time I start the truck and take off, it runs all the way to fourth gear and stays on fourth gear. So when I stop at a light and take off, it's taken off on fourth gear. Oh, what do I do? That is a quagmire. What do we do? The, I mean, that transmission is electrically controlled. I don't think it's necessarily staying in fourth gear. I mean, believe fail-safe in that transmission would be third. But it's probably running into an issue where it's just, it's just locking it into one gear. So there may be something going on. That transmission re- relies on a throttle position sensor to work. It relies on speed sensors to work. It relies on shift solenoids to work. All those things come into play. So that's, that's where it's going to have to be diagnosed. A couple things you can do yourself if you come up the stoplight. Can you manually take the lever? Whoosh, click, 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 click. All the way down to first gear and maybe take off quicker. See if that does something. That'll tell you, hey, we got an electrical problem or we got a mechanical problem. That's one of the things you can do for yourself. You know, Dave, I saw an article. I get subscribed to all these different things and do tons of reading. And one came across the other day for yesterday, late yesterday, as a matter of fact, for general auto repair shops. Um, and it was a guide to properly diagnosing transmissions. <laughs> that yeah. article must have been 17 pages long of, of diagnosing transmissions for the general auto repair shop. And that's for people that already kind of know what they're doing, you know, haven't really drilled down to transmissions. So it is very specialized. It is. Very, well, even you were talking about the Lexus and just checking the fluid level in it the other day. It was like, I mean, it was a whole thesis on how do you check the fluid level in this Lexus. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not happening at most shops you go to. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, let's get to the phones. We've Let's go with Bob and Phoenix with a 37 Ford. We're missing some numbers there. Maybe that is a 37 Ford. How can we help you, Bob? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, I just need to know if you know anybody in the Valley that handles tune port injection. Uh, I got a, a engine out of a 91 Camaro. And what are you trying to do with it? What do you mean? Uh, hand, what do you mean handles it? Well, I think I've got. It. I do most of my work, but I don't know much about electrical. And I was driving down the 101, and uh, one of the relays started on fire. Ooh, you let the smoke out, huh? Uh, so I don't know if it, uh, it blew a fuse. If I blew my computer, uh, blew the relay. I assume the relay went, uh, but. So this, I'm at Boston, where to start. So this 37 Ford has got the uh, Camaro engine transmission and wiring in it. Is that correct? Well, it's got the wiring for uh, the computer. Okay. And it's got, and it's got digital, decoded digital wiring. Right. What part of Phoenix are you in, Bob? 
uh, North uh, Union Hills, Cape Creek area. Okay. I'm going to give you two places that are not on our bumper-to-bumper -bumper list, but they're two, two uh, shops that would be very good at this type of stuff. One of them is Greenway Auto Repair over mm. like 28th Street in Greenway. Been there forever. North side of the road, Bill. Um, they work, I mean, they do hot rods and all this kind of stuff. That might be a good choice for you. Uh, a little bit further east, Blackwell Automotive at 40th Street and uh, and Greenway. Yeah. The, those might be a couple choices. They do a lot of hot rod stuff there and some custom work and fabrication. And, and that would be, that's like you brought that car to my shop, I would run. <laughs> I mean, and not, not anything bad. We just don't do that. That's not our wheelhouse. Well, you guys are not capable of it. It's, it's just not. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. And we can do it. We just, it's just, we're just not set up for that. We're set up for repairing the modern car. You know, the ten to fifteen year old car and doing standard services and slight custom work and, and higher end stuff. But just, just not that. And the other one that's been around town for a long time is Elliott's Auto Electric, for sure. Well, thanks for the call, Bob. Let's go with Glenn. Uh, he's got a 2004 Chevy Tahoe. How can we help you, Glenn? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Oh, hey, guys. Um, I listen to your show a lot. and never had a chance to call in, and you had a caller a little while back about a problem with a headlight uh, brights coming on uh, with the right-hand turn signal, and I have the, exactly the same thing. Ooh. Uh, and it's been going on for quite a while, and it's got about 300,000 miles on it. And uh, so I have my newly driving daughter uh, using it. And uh, uh, so what I tried to do is, uh, well, I thought, well, I'll just pull the, the high beam bulbs out, and uh, that way she won't uh, have somebody thinking she's flashing them at night and getting to a road rage thing or something. True, yeah. And uh, so when you do that, of course, then the low beams don't come on either. Mm. So I didn't know. Uh, first of all, I wondered, you know, is, is it like the bulb has to be in, obviously, I think, for the low beams to work. Or if there's another simple solution like that, I you know what we should have done. Too bad I don't, I don't remember her name. We could have had like Match. dot com and get you guys hooked up and go to the <laughs> shop together and split the diagnostics or, yeah. or, or or something. But you know, I just again, you got to get a wiring diagram out. You just have to figure out how that electricity is going to flow and get to where it's going to get. What you know, think of electricity as water. If it's going to run through a pipe and through a valve, valves are your switches and your relays. And you've just got to figure it out. It's just a matter of sitting down. I mean, the last thing I would do is probably go to the car. I would start in the book. you got to be the librarian first sometimes, then mm -hmm. go to the car next. So, But it, it could be, you know, it, you know, someone diagnosing it, it may very well be something simple. I mean, we could think oh, of yeah. all kind of – but, you know, for me, it's like, oh, yeah, it's the multifunction switch in the car. You know, that's the first guess, and, you know, it's a pretty high likelihood – that yeah. repair itself, it may be worth it. So you got working blinkers and working headlights, and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But I think what's funny about this is he's got a car with 300,000 miles on it, and his daughter's driving it. And some people are so funny. They, their car has like 92,000 miles on it, and it needs the first little repair. Oh, my God. And they go, oh, should I just get a new car? No, man, that is like the most unenvironmentally friendly thing to do is just to throw it away because like, it needs a... So now you know, you're a tree hugger? Yeah, uh, totally. <laughs> when it makes sense for me, I am. <laughs> but, but, but these cars can last a long time. You get a lot of life out of them. You know, you don't always have to be broke because you're always making a car payment, you know? And, and you don't necessarily have to be broke because you drive an older car. If you take care of your car and you do the necessary maintenance on it, they don't cost you a fortune to upkeep. Just don't neglect the heck out of it and then think it's going to be free to fix, you know? So anyway, take care of your stuff. Let's get Nathan with a 2010 Dodge Avenger. How can we help you, Nathan? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, love your guys' show. Um, so what my car is doing now, it had these problems about 50,000 miles ago, and then they are reappearing. The car's been running fine for 50,000 miles. And now the car's at 193, and it's doing the same thing again, and it's driving me crazy. You're driving down the road or on the highway. You lose cruise control. Car goes into limp home mode. It won't tack above 4,000. I pull the code. I get a P017 code, which is a misalignment camshaft bank two code. The other code that I'm getting now, and you may have answered you may have answered this earlier in the show with the battery thing, because the other thing I'm getting now is a code, a low system volt code. But the car starts fine. And the battery's not even it's a year old. I bought it last September. It's stamped the battery's stamped uh, nine seventeen. But it's very annoying if you turn the key you have to pull over, turn the car off, immediately turn it back on, 
clears the computer, and you can drive off fine until the next time it does it again. It might do it five minutes later, an hour later, or maybe two weeks later. Yeah, well, I got I got some I you know some ideas for you, um, for sure. The low voltage code is a is a big key, especially in a Chrysler. Um, just because a battery's brand new, some of these you know we use interstate batteries because we have good luck with them. I, literally, we started testing every kind of battery out there uh, and just making journal of it. Some of these batteries are bad off of the shelf. Okay, so we put them in the car, we test it with a tester, and it tests bad. Yeah, it starts the engine. With these new starters, they don't need a whole lot of voltage like the old days to start the car. So a lot of people argue with you a little bit, like, oh, it starts the car just fine. What do you mean I need a new battery? And we're like, hey, listen, slow down, pump the brakes. I'm not trying to sell you something you don't need. But batteries can be bad just because it's a year old or six months old or whatever. So that, and the electronics on these cars are super sensitive. So it's comparing, you know, camshaft speed versus crankshaft speed and saying we got a correlation error. It's going into a fail-safe mode. And, yeah, you can cycle the key and make it drive again. Well, you got to have the red button Yeah, on I know. There. i got to okay. push that. I turned it off when I coughed. But um, garbage in, garbage out on the computer. If the computer does not have the proper voltage... It, Whatever's happening inside may not be the right the right thing. So, again, just but I can tell you one thing: if the if there's a code for low computer voltage, it was low. Yeah, for sure. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a good interstate battery, get a relationship going with them. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're looking for a friendly, honest, competent shop, you can find them at bumper to bumperradio.com. If you're unfortunate enough to crash your car in the rain. See the collision team at bumper to bumper radio.com. Remember never to text and drive. And from all the sh- shops at bumper to bumper radio, have a soggy, safe weekend.